<laughs> James Bigham asks, Shane, do you think fans getting a ton of things signed to sell online is making it difficult for true fun fans that want to get an autograph for themselves to keep? I have been a fan for over 30 years now and I believe in getting autographs to keep. Uh, what the fans do, my my experience in the fans or the people that come and want bulk stuff signed uh, are usually memorabilia store owners and things like that. Uh, but there have been a few. Uh, I remember in, in WCW, we were at the, it was the night, it was the weekend of the pay-per-view where Hogan refused to lay down for uh, Jared. And we were in like a rotunda area. I can't remember if it was in the hotel or in, in the building. And a guy came up and, you know, we're signing for free because the company was paying us. And, you know, I signed the autograph, hand it back to him. I get another picture, same picture. I sign it, hit another one. Sign it, I hand it back. And I see this guy's got a stack of pictures like this. And I said, do you think I'm going to sit here and sign every one of those for you? Seriously? And uh, so I, you know, I, I signed a few more, like five of them for him, I think it was. And the guy walks away. Four or five minutes later, a kid comes up. Hands me a picture, I sign it, and I notice immediately it's the same picture. And, it, and he hands me a second one, and I, I looked up and started looking around. And over here behind a pillar is the guy that I'd already thrown out of line, sending him back over. And I went over and embarrassed the hell out of him. I said, You send a kid over here to do your work like this. And I told him, Look, if you want to do this, then you come to me and you say, Yeah, I have 100 pictures I'd like signed. Here's what I'll offer you, not just, Oh, hey, I'll just keep handing them to him as many as he'll sign. Uh, this is how we pay our bills. You know, this is how we. You know, we take care of our families. And so you'll find wrestlers will give you a pretty darn good price if you have, you know, a bulk of things to sell. Uh, in our case, getting a hold of Chris, you know, Moose, uh, through Shane Douglas, booking at gmail.com, uh, not to be confused with questions. Que yeah, yeah. Questions. Is, uh, so, uh, yeah, and you can get that stuff signed. It's rare that, that you see that, very rare. Most fans are excited to get a picture, get an autograph, and when you've survived as long as we've survived you know we, we we've been part of people's lives for you know decades and it's uh uh it's incredibly humbling uh last summer ron simmons and i were heading someplace with chris and he and i've known each other since breaking into the business and you know we'd often talk about his mother and my mother and they were the exact same lady they weren't the same lady but they were the exact same lady same class same quality same loving people and he turned around and said, would your mother understand what we're doing today? And I said, what do you mean? He said, like, one is getting paid to sign autographs. I said, oh, no, my God. So my mother would say, well, what do they want your autographs for? <laughs> you know, she, she'd be, like, perplexed by the whole thing. Uh, but it really is a, like, in getting to this point, it is a pleasure and a blessing to be able to go to conventions and meet fans that have watched you that long and, and watch their face light up and give it that, that you meant something to them in that respect. Uh it's a feeling I wish everybody out there could experience because it really is very humbling and very warming at the same time. Uh, and, and I guess the cap off to a, to a lot of hard work over a lot of years. And, you know, like when, when uh, fans will come up and they'll say stuff like, hey, thank you for all you've done in wrestling. And, and to me, that sounds like, hey, thank you for your service to the guys that are like protecting the country, the men and women protecting our country. And I don't quite put ourselves on anywhere near that same level. But I've also been corrected by the fans. I'd said that many times in interviews earlier. And, uh, you know, in the overall scheme of what we do, it's not very important. We're not curing cancer, that kind of stuff. And I got reprimanded by several fans after that saying, don't sell yourself short. You've allowed me to forget this crappy part of my life or this crappy job that I have or the, you know, the spouse I want to strangle or whatever. Uh, and I guess in that sense, you know, we have brought a little bit of light to some people's uh, uh, living rooms, and and but you've also invited us into your living room. So I see that as a two-way street. And, I, and for everybody out there watching, thank you from the bottom of my heart because the kid that broke into wrestling could never have imagined that anybody would even want to hear what I'm saying today, let alone tuning into the numbers that you are. So appreciate it from everybody. I'll add to that as well because I've been to only like a couple of wrestling-related events where i mean i not like appeared as in like now featuring james or whatever i've just sure. walked there and then people have stopped me and like shut my hand and said oh, and it's like really really humbling and you know i get some nice messages as well saying same as you and i never actually say thank you very much for those uh you know the ones that do read I, I, over the three channels i get so many comments you just can't read them all but occasionally yeah. i'll catch one and say you know hey you've you've helped me forget not me but you know the people i sure. interview yeah. you know you, you know it's helped me uh 
forget, you know, the death of a loved one, or as you say, even like I'm a trucker late at night, and just these podcasts help me get through the day. Yes. And it's incredibly yeah, yeah. humbling, and it's great to think that, you know, because I actually do this a lot to my family as well, and I just say, I've got, because m- my wife has got a very important job, and mm-hmm. I get paid more than her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, 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 yeah, exactly. She's got a really important job, and but the thing is, is that I've got what I consider an incredibly frivolous job, but it's not yeah. because no. ent- entertainment's no. incredibly important in that same sort of vein. So I always sell myself short, and and I'm sure you're the same in that sense of, you yeah. know, we're not saving lives, we're not doctors, we're not policemen, you do that kind of thing. But it's sure. but it's, it's it's got its own value, absolutely. And there's millions of these podcasts out there on, on just any topic you can think of and that people take the time to find this one yeah. and listen to what this idiot has to say uh is you know it's it, it's incredible uh, you know it's uh it's it's i guess it's like the sort of like the epitaph to a career right you, you put this time in and you wonder throughout that entire career is anybody really paying attention you know like it's uh you know the, the way i presented the franchise character was meant to be the anti-hero, very much the anti-hero, the 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 you know the the uh, counterpoint and the vulgar counterpoint, and you know they're hopefully nudging some people saying like I don't want to be anything like that guy, uh, but the fact that I hear fans now coming up and saying I used to hate your guts, I want to Taz to break your neck, but as I got older, I realized what you're going, and now I hear my favorite wrestler. Uh, it, it's for us has been, you know, you hear actors say you know for those two hours I get to put my skin in somebody else's skin and become that person. And, you know, it, 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 I've been able to do that for 41 years, you know, and, and, uh, and, and, and I also went to pack the guy up and put him in the drawer for the, for a bit. Uh, uh, but it does, it allows me the two very different viewpoints on the world and approaches to things. Uh, because I played this guy so long that I can see that, but that people are now getting it. I had one kid <laughs> come up, and uh, at, at Legends of the Ring, uh, Franny and I were there. It was the first time we'd appeared together in years. And we had this line draped around the room and out in the hallway. And so, you know, I would sign first or shoot sign first, hand it to me and I'd sign. And I noticed like some kind of altercation or melee going on 15, 20 feet over this way. And which drew my attention. And I see people gathered around. Now I'm assuming somebody went down, like somebody had a heart attack or something. So I jump around the table to go out there, and there's this kid just collapsed, and he's shaking, you know, trembling like a puppy dog. And uh, he said that as he approached, he got so nervous because he was getting an autograph for his friend, but he was a big fan as well. And when he first saw Francine, he started like just to losing it. And I'm like, like that's yeah, you know, that's very strange, right? I like in in, in our take from it. Uh, because I think we've been fairly accessible o- over all these years. Uh, you can come see us and, you know, a lot of like Franny has her eyes up here, podcasts and everything. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of ways to, to inter- interject with us. But the fact that anybody wants to interject with us, <laughs> that wants to take the time out of their day to spend money to come and meet us and do this or do that is, uh, is surreal. So it's a uh, uh, blessing every day. Who is... <laughs> Who's the worst at faking signatures? So, like a wrestler will fake a signature. So Greg Valentine. This is Greg <laughs> Valentine. No, no, he's not him. But he told a story where you were sat last year now, and no. said he couldn't stop burying Brutus Beefcake for whatever reason in that interview. And he said he used to sign Hulk Hogan's name as well as his name on pictures of him and Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I, you know, I always, you know, sort of kicked myself in the butt because, you know, I, I, you know. We, Somebody hands you something that has a bunch of signatures on it, and you're looking, you see Sabu's like an S and a squiggly line and like a thing. And Taz is like T and an A that's sort of an A and a Z thrown together. So it's basically like two squibbles, you know. And I, I gotta write the franchise. <laughs> I, mean, mm-hmm. I gotta write a whole tome over here. And these guys are Taz, 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 Sabu, Sabu. So, I'm like, I, I need a rubber stamp. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. All good. 